So far, we have seen how we could replace certain objects from around us with models of the same proportions. We identified right rectangular prisms and find ways to represent them in a diagram. Now we're ready to use this to deepen our understanding of volume. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain volume and its unit of measurement in mathematical terms. Here we have a glass jug and a drinking glass filled with water. Which one has more water? Have a look. The water jug definitely holds more water than the glass. This means that the volume of water that is in the glass is less than the volume of water that is in the jug. In other words, the amount of water in the jug takes up more space than the amount of water in the glass. Have a look at these sugar packets. There is more sugar in this packet than in this one. Another way to say this is to say that the volume of sugar in the big packet is greater than the volume of sugar in the smaller packet. In other words, it is not only liquids that have volume, but also solids like the sugar in the packet. Here I have four containers of equal size. Now, I'm going to put different substances into each one. As you can see, the first one is filled with spice. The second one I'm going to fill with popcorn seeds. and the third with water. And the last one I'm going to leave empty. But hang on, it's actually filled with air. What can we say about each of these containers? Well, we can start off by saying that the amount of space taken up by the water is the same as the amount of space taken up by the air. Now, what would you say for this? Now we can say that the amount of space taken up by the popcorn seeds in this container is the same amount of space that was taken up by the water which was originally in this container. Now finally, look at this. Well, as you can see, the amount of space taken up by the spice is the same amount of space that was taken up by the popcorn seeds when they were originally in this container. What can we conclude from this? Well, that the space taken up by the water, spices, popcorn seeds and air is the same in all cases. Or, in other words, that the water, popcorn seeds, spices and air all have the same volume. Does this surprise you? The popcorn seeds are much heavier than the water, and the air is the lightest. But yet you saw that they all have the same volume. Let's test this idea with another experiment. As you can see, I have filled this new jug to the brim with water. Now, I'm going to take these popcorn seeds from this container and put them into the jug. What do you think is going to happen when we put them into the jug? As you can see, the water overflows out of the jug. 
So we have put a blue container under the jug to collect the water that overflows. What do you think we will see if all the water that is in the blue container is poured into the container that the popcorn seeds were in? Let's try it out. The water has filled the container to the top. What we have found here is that the volume of a solid immersed in a liquid is equal to the volume of the liquid that it displaces. In plain language, what that means is that if we measure the amount of the water that was pushed out by the popcorn seeds, it is the same as the volume of the popcorn seeds. Do you see that I have about a glass of water that was displaced? This means that the volume of the popcorn seeds is about a glass. But what kind of measurement is about a glass? We will need to describe this measurement more accurately than this. What we need is a standard unit and instrument for measuring volume. Remember that we have a standard unit like meters for measuring length and tools like rulers and tape measures for doing the actual measuring. Volume also has a standard unit of measure. Let's do a little investigation. We want to measure the volume of five of these identical plastic cubes. Each one measures 1,6 cm by 1,6 cm by 1,6 cm. We start with a measuring cylinder. A measuring cylinder is an instrument used to measure liquid in milliliters or liters. Now, what we do is fill the measuring cylinder with water up to the 20 milliliter mark. I'm going to drop the five cubes into the measuring cylinder. And now look at the water level. It's reading just above 40 milliliters, which means that it has gone up by just above 20 milliliters. And therefore this means that the volume of the five dye put together is just above 20 milliliters. Why do you think we only filled the glass up to the 20 milliliter mark? Why didn't we fill it to the brim? Well, it would have overflowed. Then we wouldn't know exactly how much the water level rose by. Good. Now let's take a careful look at this plastic cube. We have another metal cube here that is exactly the same size as the plastic cube, namely 1,6 cm by 1,6 cm by 1,6 cm. Even though they're the same size, we know that metal is heavier than plastic. What do you think will happen if we put these two cubes into two cylinders with the same amount of water in them? Do you think that the heavier one, the metal one, will push the water level up more than the plastic one will? Well, look at this. Can you see that they actually push the water level up by the same amount? But what conclusion can we make from this? Although the one object was heavier than the other, they pushed out or displaced the same amount of water. We can say that the two cubes displace the same volume of water because they are exactly the same size, 1,6 by 1,6 by 1,6 centimeters. The important thing here is that objects that are exactly the same size will have the same volume. But we still want to know what the unit of measurement for volume is. The standard unit of measurement for volume is a unit cube. A unit cube is a cube with each edge one unit long. The unit of this cube is one centimeter. 
It could also have been one meter or one millimeter, but all the edges must be the same, one unit long. This solid is composed of four unit cubes, so its volume is equal to four unit cubes, which is normally stated as cubic units. So, the volume of a solid is a number showing how many cubic units it contains. Let's look at another structure. How many unit cubes is this structure made out of? In other words, what is its volume? It is made up of 5 unit cubes, so its volume is 5 cubic units. Have a good look at this picture of cubes that are packed next to one another. What would you say the volume of this structure is? Did you get 9 cubic units? It is made up of 9 unit cubes, so its volume is 9 cubic units. Let's build another structure. We have already put one unit cube on this area. How many unit cubes can be arranged on this area in one layer? Count carefully and you will get 16. In two layers, there will be, yes, 32. In three layers, there will be, right again, 48 unit cubes. Did you notice that this shape is the shape of a right rectangular prism? Great! So we can say that its volume is 48 cubic units. So far, so good. But what is a unit? Remember, we said that it's the length of an edge of a cube. So, if each of these cubes were 1 cm cubed, then the volume of this structure would be 48 cubic centimeters. If the length of each edge of the cube had been 1 millimeter, then the volume of the structure would be given in cubic millimeters. Or if the cube was measuring 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter, it would give us a volume in cubic meters. It's time for us to recap. We can say that the volume of an object is the amount of space that it takes up. We use cubic units to measure volume, for example, cubic centimeters, cubic meters, and so on. Here's your task for this lesson. These structures are all made with unit cubes. Identify those that have equal volumes. Hope you had fun in today's lesson. Salang Hantle.